All right guys, so welcome back to a brand new video. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how we can end-to-end -end test our local uh, strategy or authentication, because right now we do have authentication. We wanna make sure that we can test that accordingly so we can ensure that it works. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can do that. So let's go ahead and set up another end-to-end -end test file. So what I'll do is I'll create a new file and I'm just gonna call this, uh... actually no, I'll just leave it alone. I'll, I'll put this inside here. Off. E2E spec yes. And we'll just copy and paste a lot of the stuff in our users con our users spec file. And we'll paste it in here and we'll just delete the stuff that we don't need. So let me just delete all of this stuff. And we will change up some of these things later. I think this is all we'll need for now. So uh let's just describe this as a logging user. Okay, let's just call this authentication. I don't really have a better name for this, so we'll just leave it alone like that. Okay, so this is really just the same thing as the other spec file that we have, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a URL, I'll call this slash API slash auth slash login. And what we want to do is we want to end-to-end -end test this login route. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, it's very similar to how we end-to-end -end tested our other route, so we should say it should uh, login. They don't really have a better testing for that. Uh, we'll go ahead and return request uh, app.getHttp server. And this is going to be a post request and we're going to uh, we're going to post to this URL and we're going to send the credentials. So we're going to, need to send the username and the password. Uh, so I should have let me first of all let me actually go ahead and do this. Let me go ahead. And uh, do this. Uh, let me see. Uh, I think what we could do is we can just reuse one of these. So if I go to my database, yeah, we have a ton of uh, records. Let me just create a unique one real quick, and then we'll exit and we'll only run the we'll only run this auth spec file. Uh, so let me let me do this. Uh, actually, you know what? Let me through. Let me do it through Postman real quick. All right. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm just going to create a new user. So I should have, uh, I should have that right here, perfect. Okay, so uh, let me just create a new user. I'll just call this uh, test user test. Uh, we'll leave the password as test user test. And then email, we'll just leave that as test user test. So we'll create that and we should, oh, our server is not even running. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to use the login. Okay. So uh, let's just make sure it's in the database. Perfect. Okay. So let's run our end to end test. And I think I should be able to actually specify the test I want to run. So let me just run auth between spec TS. I only want to run this one. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so uh, right now, nothing should really happen. Okay, good. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the credentials uh, to our server. So the username is going to be, whoops, test user test. Password should be test user test. And I think that's all we'll need to send. Yep, perfect. Uh, so when we log in, uh, okay, good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead. So by default right now, uh, by default, when we log in, uh, it's, let me just test to make sure that this actually works. Okay, hold on. We need to run our server again. Let me just make sure that we can actually log in. It's always good to do like your own UAT, like user acceptance test first, and then write a test case. You can also write a test case too. Okay, so you can see right over here, by default, it returns a 201. That's because it's a post request. Uh, so, uh, but if we provide the incorrect details, it's gonna give us a 401. Okay, so that's what we'll test. So in the end-to-end -end test, we will go ahead and expect a 201. Okay, and let's go ahead and test it out. So, oops. Okay, so the test should pass. Okay, so it seems like it failed. So let's figure out why it failed. So it's saying that request.login is not a function. Okay, so I think I know what the issue is. Uh, I think the problem here is that we actually don't have Passport as a provider 
for our tests. Uh, so we need to actually take care of that. All right, guys, so it's been about like 50 minutes that I've been trying to figure out this problem. And I think I finally figured it out. So uh, it wasn't an issue with uh, Nest.js. It was just an issue with us uh, not having the middleware registered. So um, basically the reason why we're getting that request.login function is not a function is because uh, we actually need to enable the passport.initialize as well as passport passport middleware. So we'll do that. And we'll also need to uh, have the sessions as well. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just copy this and uh, I'll go ahead and just paste this right over here. And I'll also copy this and paste that. And then we'll go ahead and just import everything that we need. Uh, so we'll actually need, uh, let's see, let's first import uh, session as well as passport. We're gonna also import type ORM store. Uh, and then we'll also import the get repository method that is going to be used to actually get the session repository. I don't really think we need the session store to be honest with you, because our application is really going to, uh, you know, it's it's not really going to be any persistence anyways. Uh, and it'll, I'm pretty sure, like even like during the test, it'll save everything, um, it, like it'll save everything in memory. So um, I think we don't even need the session store, but we'll add it just in case. Uh, so I'll go ahead and get the repository over here. And then we'll also need to just import the session entity. So I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, okay, so this should fix the error that we were getting. So we should actually be able to authenticate correctly now. Uh, so if I go back to, uh, let me go ahead and just run the test again. So if I go ahead and if I run the auth e2e spec file, we should be able to uh, there we go. You can see that uh, I have a bunch of console logs, and that's because I was spending a lot of time trying to figure out what on earth was going on. But I was man I was able to figure out what the issue is, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's because we didn't have the middle middleware registered properly, or we didn't even have it registered at all, so that's why. So if I go ahead and run this again, you can see that I have the correct credentials, test user test, test user test for the user and password. And that should give us a 201. And you can see that the logs are all being logged. Okay. Uh, and if I were to give a give an invalid password, you're going to see that it's going to give us a 401 status code. Here we go. And you can see that it says expect 201, got 401 unauthorized. And that's absolutely correct. All right. So that's good. That took a while to figure it out, but I'm glad we figured it out. And now what's going to... What we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and visit the slash uh, auth, not slash auth, slash users uh, route. So from a previous video, we used the authenticated guard to protect this route. So only people who are authenticated can actually access this resource. So we'll go ahead and uh, let's see, we should be able to just visit this route without needing to authenticate because we are already authenticated and we should be able to just get a 200 back. So let's go ahead and test this out. So it should visit slash API slash users and return 200. So return request app.github server. We'll do it get and then we'll do slash API slash users expect a 200. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the test and we'll make sure that the endpoint actually works and it'll give us back a 200. Uh, let's see. So it's saying uh, expected 200 got 403 forbidden. So uh, it seems like uh, even though we've logged in over here, it doesn't even matter because um, over here we're still considered logged out. So I'm not sure if it's even worth trying to like maintain the session uh, because I, I think maybe uh, it doesn't really like consider cookies. Like it doesn't send cookies at all. I think, I, th I don't know if there's a way where you can provide cookies. I'm not sure. Let me see. There should, I I'm sure there's probably some kind of option. Let me, let me check. Okay. So uh, it seems like there is a way to figure this out. So let me see if I can do this. So, uh, there's a callback function 
because the error and the response object. And we should be able to get the cookie from the headers. So we know that the cookie itself is, um, we, we know what the name of the cookie is. So let me just show you real quick. If I console log res.cookies or res.headers, and let's just see what it looks like when we run the test. So there is a way that we can definitely get this working and we can send the cookie uh, when we make the request. So let's just see what it looks like. So uh, right over, let's see, since we got a lot of errors, let's see, let's go for logs. Uh, okay, let's see, seems like we did something wrong. It's saying, oh yeah, I know why, it's because we're over here. Um, all right, let's fix that. Let's call the end response. And let's just get the cookies. Okay, let's try again. Okay, so it's saying that you cannot set headers uh, after they're sent to the client. So it seems like it gives us an issue if we try to call that cookies. Uh, I think expect. That's weird though, because it seems like other people are able to... Uh... Oh, I think maybe we need to actually call a function after it's been done. Yeah, I think I know why. Uh, let me see. Uh... Okay, so it seems like uh, it won't let us do that because, uh... okay, let's go ahead and call the dog right over here explicitly. Maybe that should work. So it's saying that you cannot log anything after the test is done. Uh, okay, let me just set this to any for now. Why is it giving me this? Oh, wait, whoops, that's the wrong one. It should be right over here. All right, let's see if this works. Okay, so you can see right over here, we have, uh, okay, great. So uh, let's see, is there the headers? Okay, great. So you can see right over here, you know, we have the headers right over here. Okay, we have the username and password, we have everything from the headers. So we basically want to get this set cookie. Uh, and I guess essentially what we need to do is we need to pretty much get that cookie. And then we need to set that cookie uh, when we before we send it. So what we can do is we can go ahead and get this cookie property. So what I'll do is this. I'm going to go ahead and create a global variable called let cookie. And then we'll go ahead and do a cookie is equal to res.headers uh, set cookie. And, I'm, and I got this from a Stack Overflow. Uh, I got this from a Stack Overflow. Or not Stack Overflow, but GitHub issues. So it seems like someone was able to figure out an issue, which is great. So uh, yeah, all credit to uh, that person for figuring that out. So uh, yeah, basically we're gonna go ahead and get the cookie and we should be able to just uh, set the cookie here. And then now, right before we make the post request, we should be able to set the cookie uh, by calling set or no. Let me see, it should be like get set. There should be somewhere where we can set the cookie. Let me see real quick. Okay, there we go, right here. No, we're not saying coding sets. Okay, so cookie, and then cookie, and expect 200. So hopefully this works. If it does, then we found a good solution to this issue. Uh, so let's try it out again, see what happens. Okay, so it seems like it failed. Uh, invalid value on 500 cookie. So it seems like 
uh, oh wait, what am I doing? It's set cookie, not set cookie R. I mistyped it. Whoops. Okay, now let's try it again. Let's see if it works. Uh, okay, so uh, should visit API users return zero. Okay, so it seems like this works, but the other method, the other a the other test failed for some reason. Test functions cannot take cannot both take a done callback and return something. Uh, so it cannot take a done and return. Okay, I guess maybe it's because yeah. Okay, let's do, let's remove that. Okay, now now this should work. Okay, there we go. So it works just fine. So this is a hacky way to kind of get it working. Um, uh, and I mean, it works. So this is a good way. So you can save the cookie and send it over, which I guess uh, that's a trick. And we know that this is protecting the route because uh, if we were not authenticated, if we didn't have the valid cookie, it would not give us back uh, a 200. Okay, so uh, that is going to be pretty much it for this tutorial. I'm glad we were able to figure a solution out to solving this uh, login, uh, te like testing this login uh, authentication strategy. And that's going to be pretty much it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out.